Are we are we good? We're going. Yep, we're going. This is how. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this is, is how uh, we do it. This is largely a group of professional uh, podcasters, web developers, and me. Uh, <clears throat> I am joined as always um, by uh, Buzzard Trainer Allison, and uh, I sure do like me some Berman that. Trainer Chris. I sure do like me some Berman. Happy to happy to be here. <laughs> a little panicky on this uh, chilly Thursday morning, wearing my uh, bananas on skateboard socks. Allison, uh, that's from uh, sunny Florida. Allison is uh, joining us from uh, just south of the Arctic Circle, <laughs> and uh, Chris is joining us just east of the uh, western seaboard. The show oh, is uh, yep. geography is good stuff, and uh, we uh, kind of meander our way through a topic. By the end, you will have learned something, probably not related to the topic. <laughs> At least I always do. Hopefully, you do. The learning is just the the cherry on top of the sundae. If, if this is new, go to binarygenesis.us and find a show that starts with Chris talking, and you'll you'll be totally fine. <laughs> that's, that's the way we need to do this. <laughs> Preferably start a start an episode that doesn't begin with me hitting the record button uh, before Gary is even prepared to do intros. <laughs> Which is every other episode. Which is so if this is an even numbered episode. Pick an odd number of episodes. And allegedly, this is an even numbered episode. Allegedly, this is episode forty, though we have no proof of that. <laughs> the fact that you need proof, I I really enjoy as well. Um. I, I was thinking about it the other day that I had sort of lost track of where we were, were in binary on episodes. And then I thought, I don't care. <laughs> don't need to know. <laughs> that was, that was my thinking as well. It's just like, I'm okay with this. Letting it, just letting it slip away into the void. Yes. For those keeping track in binary, this would be episode one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. But shout out, shout out to this. <laughs> but if you're listening to this or looking at the posts on the site or looking at the uh, at the <clears throat> podcast in your podcast app or something or looking at it on YouTube, you would have already known that. We're the ones that don't know that. Yeah. We're up, we're upholding a standard for ourselves that <laughs> that doesn't need to be there. Yeah, what kind of prep time usually goes into this show? Uh, I'll speak for myself I, and say I spend minutes, minutes when we record. I spend longer than minutes, um, much to my own detriment. <laughs> this I turns much, into a book report situation for me, usually. I spend much more time at the end um, in the Wikipedia black yeah. hole. Yeah. Ooh. Can you hear the cat? Yeah. Yes. So no squeaky door today. Instead, we have an old deaf cat. <laughs> he forgets that he's there's people here so he starts yelling and then you walk up and pat him and he panics because he didn't hear you coming up behind him that's also very endearing i also yeah. like how loud he is because he can't hear how loud he is mm -hmm. no it, well the best part the best part the best part is this is like a normal thing at night now mm -hmm. we turn off the lights and go to bed five minutes later he does that sometimes i get up and i walk in and tap him like hey I mean, I, he has he has Alzheimer's as well because he can't remember that there's people here. Five minutes later, it's like, am I alone? Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we have a we have a cat that does that does that as well, but she can hear, so she'll forget that we're around, or she won't know where we are, and then we'll say Kendra, and then she'll stop. So I can't imagine what that would be like if the saying Kendra and then she stops wasn't a thing. <laughs> you I, almost, must, you almost wish i had a cat but then the frequency of the noise is also um <clears throat> in the same level as a squeak in the door hinge because i can't hear it i mean i can hear it but not 
clearly not as loudly as folks on the other end of calls because they're like, wow, that cat is loud. I'm like, eh, he's, I mean, a little. Like, I mean, he's louder than you are. No, he's not louder than I am. But, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, apparently, the, the frequency response on these microphones picks up cats and squeaky doors. Because how far away is the cat from you right now? I don't know. 10 15, feet? 15 inches. But far, like, like, it sounds like the cat is pretty close. Like, right here. I know. It sounds like the cat's, like, yelling right into the microphone. No. The cat's, like, in the bathroom with a door between us. So. I don't have these problems with my plants, oddly enough. <laughs> Your plants don't yell at you. Your plants don't yeah. yell at you. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you know what I should have done before we started this? I should have uh, gotten a uh, chart. Uh, yeah, that too. Uh, I do ha I have had plenty of coffee. Um, I'm a little worried about my battery life, so let's start killing some things. <laughs> Goodbye, Docker. Don't kill Zoom. Don't, yeah, don't don't press that button. This is like this is like your version, the developer version of Goodnight Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Docker. <laughs> Good night, VPN. Good night, TV monitor. Good night, Good night PHP Storm. Good night, file merge. Yeah, I killed Storm immediately. Good night, Doctor. Good night, PM man <laughs> project manager saying hush. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Slack. <laughs> Thing, right? Good night, postman. Uh, I think we're down to it. Yeah, it's reasonable now. It's reasonable. It's a more rational number of programs open. If you oh, had to shut down Zoom, I would have had quite a hearty chuckle. <laughs> I, I totally goofing around um, did that on a call um, with someone one time. I was they, we were talking about like how do you mute your microphone? They said oh command Q, and I was like oh yeah, and I hit it and <laughs> like totally like before I hit it, I knew what it did. I was just being silly. I'm like I bet they think I'm an idiot. <laughs> but it shut off the mic for what it's worth. Oh. They couldn't hear me any longer. So that's one strategy. Command Q. No. <laughs> maybe maybe when I like have to cough during this episode, I'll just drop from the call entirely. <laughs> it's the mute button. Let's pop back up. I had someone quit by accident, like mid sneeze, because they like sneezed and then hit their keyboard with their hand because they were like, I don't know. It was it was the. I just wish I had somehow captured video of it because it would have been an amazing, an amazing replay. <laughs> I, I love freeze face on calls. Oh. I mean, like yeah. Zoom flakes out or Hangouts hangs out or whatever, and you get like the person that they dropped, but they're still there, frozen, and then they show up, and you have like them in the same setting talking, but then you have freeze face next to it. I capture a lot. Like if it happens where they're next really to them, I can't face. help but screen capture it. You know? Like you, how, do you, how do you not? And then you post it in whatever like the appropriate channel is, you know, mm. and everybody laughs about it. I it's like to, happy birthday on calls. It's I used to record, it, it's a bad idea, but you have to do it anyway. I used to record gifts of um, uh, people eating. That was a thing. It was actually a con it's actually continuing a tradition uh, at WebDev of recording gifts of people eating. Um, that started before I was there. Um, there's lots of gifts of some dude that I've never that I never worked with like. <laughs> just shoving an entire hamburger in his face or you know various of the so i just decided i'd continue the tradition so anybody anytime i saw anybody eating i'd just record them um and then play it back and, and then what's your preferred um recording app uh lice cap yeah awful name yeah awful name they're um, not uh they're not selling any additional add-ons to me with that name but no no that's mostly out of habit i think there are better things now um but. dropler has it built in so i end up using dropler a lot mm. i think dropbox does too i don't i mean i i recording used to be a thing but now it just happens i used um i used the giphy recorder for a while but that mm -hmm. limits the length of the gif that you record um and i, I like I'm, that in I'm used to lice cap you want no and boundaries like, yeah <laughs> In Dropbox, I can record and then decide, like, is this going to be with audio, like a real screen capture where I'm narrating, or is it just a simple GIF? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Is that, a paid, is that a paid Dropler thing? I don't know. 
Okay. I, I mean, I'm like I use the company Dropler. I I would assume they pay for it. I have no idea what's available in the free version. Ah, I've never looked. So it's been a while. Uh, Has it? We had, yeah, we had a little bit of a break. There is the American tradition of Thanksgiving. Oh, snap. I lost there a week is, in there, yeah. There is the international tradition of Black Friday. Uh, anybody celebrate the International Black Friday Day? No. No. Where did I, I did. buy anything at all on London Friday? No. I did. What did you get? I got, get? My, I got, I a, I got myself a big-ass monitor. Hmm. But why do you, you, mon- you need to monitor your ass? <laughs> What's that? Why do you need to monitor your ass? <laughs> Make sure it's big. <laughs> Make sure it's like, the appropriate size. The appropriate big. It's, it's at the appropriate size. <laughs> um. So the the real reason I got a big ass monitor is because um, I was working on the project and there were things that were happening at higher resolutions than my monitor would would support uh, in terms of styling that I wasn't seeing at all. And so I'd get these uh, I'd get these code reviews on my PR um, that say, oh, it's doing this thing. And I'm like, I, 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 how did you even see that? And it's because they had a monitor that I could actually do that. So I decided that's a bad look. Um, I'm going to fix that problem. So, oh, that sounds awful, number one. Like, I don't want any more than 15 inches to look at. Yeah, no, it's I, I don't have, a, like, I don't want this 27-inch monstrosity on my desk. Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, um, what, uh, sorry. Um, so are you able to expense this or no? Yes. Well, that's good. Yeah. But I, but I did, and I looked after Black Friday to see what the actual cost would be, and I did save the company a hundred bucks on it, so. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And I also got a, um, I got a Mac Mini. Ooh. Um, because. New one? No, an old one. I want a new one. Yeah, um, the new price. one's freaking awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I'm, it's, do you want to drop a thousand bucks for a brand new computer? And because that's what it is. And that's not really what I want to use it for. I want to use it for um, essentially like a, f- a file server. And also um, like, I want to move all my, all the, the videos that are on the network and all our pictures, like back them up there, like basically just have it sit there and, and host things um, mm-hmm. for other stuff to connect to and not really That's use it as a, as a machine itself. I totally so I have one of those sitting like, as it says for measuring things, I totally have one of those sitting like one 15th of a cat distance from me right now. <laughs> yeah. So I, so, so I was, love, I spent love the Mac mini as like a, general server thing I, I spent last night starting to set that up i have a cool script that's probably not checked in anywhere i have a cool script that if you use cloudflare um you, and you have a dynamic ip address like it'll just keep whatever subdomain mapped to it hmm. with with like about a minute latency because it's it's cron but i don't really care if i have a minute downtime on that thing every once in a while that seems acceptable <laughs> Yeah, for what I use it for. I, I have a bunch of like automated scripts that run on it. I actually think it's where, I probably know this, I think it's where our website's backed up. I hope it's where our website's backed up, where I expect our website to be backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, our website is backed up? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I have this, I have another stupid script that pushes to that subdomain. So whatever computes that subdomain, um, map to that subdomain, then we, we, I push sites and database dumps. So that there's a backup somewhere. Not that it would be fun to restore, but at least it exists. And it's, I check it occasionally, you know, like twice a year. Oh yeah, it's still working. Cool. Use Gary for your hosting needs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brought to you today by our sponsor, Gary, who you can hire for. Well, there was, there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a company, um, Mac Mini Colo, and you could pay like a monthly fee and co-locate a Mac Mini. And that was for quite a while. I used that as web server because then I could also do other things on it. Mm. Uh, and that was nice. Um, but then like the sites I was hosting kind of made sense to spin off to a, like a VPS, a digital ocean droplet or something. But I started to miss that server and, oh yeah. And that was, that was when I first started doing talks at WordCamp. So um, I had my thing where I would like stick Leonardo DiCaprio photos in every few slides. So the server's name was Leonardo, obviously. 
Yeah. And I had yeah. like other other services were named after movies he had been in. So I had like Titanic and I had Inception. <laughs> my Why is my mini... <laughs> Yeah, that's a good it question. start yeah, it's a great question. It started like as I was doing these slides, I'm like, gosh, these are so dry. So I just thought it would be fun to sneak in Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know why I settled on Leonardo DiCaprio. I think because the movie where he and the bear wrestle, what was that called? Was out at the time. And it was like a sort of a story. Um, That's somewhat recent though. That's like only like a, isn't it a recent? Two, maybe three years ago. Yeah, it is fairly recent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, there's no reason. I didn't see it. I mean, I'm not trying to do that at all. It was just a thing. And I thought, you know, so Leonardo DiCaprio photos and then, um, and then from there, I needed to screenshot like different services. So I named them after Leonardo DiCaprio movies. Right. And it's sort of, it's sort of stuck. We, we, I mean, we missed, we missed the naming machines thing, you know, like that used to be a fun thing you did. You named your servers, but now yeah. I, I so many or they're so insignificant. They changed so my, much. My, yeah, exactly. They changed so much. My, so, uh, my, my, my mini is, is the first non uh sweet treat themed uh mm. name and it is very unimaginatively named mini me mm. um which felt like a good because i was kind of done with the, the sweet treats thing so the sweet treats thing started with um uh when i worked at event espresso uh i complained a lot about my about my computer because it was old it was slow i wasn't able to do things and it was it was becoming a, a pain point so, um, <laughs> the two the two founders of the company, or the founder of the company, and the, the business guy who who he joined it in as a partner, um, Garth and Seth, um, decided to to for for Christmas um, gift me with uh, a new computer. But I didn't know that that's what it was. And what Seth told me um, in IRC because we used IRC back then, back in those days. Wow. Um, what Seth told me was that, oh, Garth needs your address um, so that he can drop by because his wife made a fruitcake and he wants to drop by. He's in town and he wants to, he wants to drop, drop this fruitcake by. And so and he comes – and I, I kind of knew that it wasn't a fruitcake, but I also <laughs> didn't know that it wasn't a fruitcake. Like it, it could very well have been a fruitcake. Um, and they're talking about it weird, like probably it wasn't a fruitcake, but it could still have been a fruitcake. <laughs> Um, and uh, like a fruitcake laced with something. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, you know, Garth's Mormon, so probably <laughs> not. But um, so, so he shows up on on. They both act. They both actually show up at at, at, at our place, and uh, they're holding a big ass, um, also big ass. Uh, <laughs> I'm sensing a, a theme here. <laughs> yeah, uh, box with a 27 inch uh, iMac, and that, and so iMac became the fruitcake so whenever i talked about the fruit like so so then they were like how's the fruitcake doing and uh, oh the fruitcake is doing well um and so then after that everything needed to be themed around that so then i had um so the other when we got another imac it was called uh, sugar daddy because i got it for aaron <laughs> that's amazing um and when i passed on um when i no, and then, then when I got a laptop, the laptop was called Honey Bun. Um, no, 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 no. The, 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 the iMac was, the other iMac was Sweet Cheeks. Um, the laptop was, uh, was Honey Bun, or, yeah, I don't know. I'm glad you started off with the fruitcake explanation because otherwise all these other names would are seem really, yeah, really out of context. Well, I mean that's kind of the point too, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but like I, I, after, like after you got like sweet cheeks and honey bun and fruitcake and and all this other crap, I was like, I don't have anywhere to go with this. Yeah, no. you're like Star <laughs> Wars planets. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like you you really have to switch up the themes after a while then you're like I I named I named this laptop and then I changed the name so it's kind of I, it kind of exists as two identities cuz I named it um Honey Bun and then I realized no I named it I named this one Sugar Daddy and then I realized that if Sugar Daddy appeared on my screen like from the command line that, that would be really bad if I was sharing my screen so <laughs> I quickly renamed it to renamed it to Nyan Cat 
Um, so it exists on the network as, as Sugar Daddy, but like at least my terminal still says Neancat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the things that you have to take into consideration. Yeah, like I, that was a late, that was a little late for me. And that, that's, the, that's the point at which I realized these names are going a little bit, <laughs> a little bit too well, far in you, one direction. When you're, when you're screen sharing and someone pops up like the terminal, and it's still like white with black text. <laughs> I, that, like, was, that I, was like, I started working with, uh, on the mini, I started working with um, doing stuff in terminal because I was, I was uh, setting up sick beard and stuff. And um, it was the white with black text. And like, and, and because it's on a TV screen, it's like really small. It's like, okay, I need to do something about the steam. So I immediately changed it to just one of the built in, like yeah. black with green text uh, scre uh, screens and increase the font size just so they have something else. Yeah, I can. I would do like the whole customization, custom colors thing, but I'm not going to be on that thing long enough for it to matter. <laughs> yeah, so mine, I, I took my Zish profile and dropped it over on mine, so it matches it exactly. But I, I, I haven't plugged mine into a monitor. I, it's been a long time. In fact, the only thing I can plug it into is the iMac, and I put the iMac into target mode. Mm. Ever use the screen there? I think it's called target mode. No, that's hard drive sharing. Video target mode? I don't know. Whatever it's called. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so like when I, I, I haven't access to visually forever. I like that sentence. I haven't accessed it visually in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. It looks good. Um, so we, do we have a topic today? I just... We do. I just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> we should get to the topic before. We can, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, the topic for today is the Grammarian's War. I don't know anything about it, but I know my uncle was involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> he had to have been. The Grammarian's War. Mm -hmm. Is this like, is this like, okay, so, so there are words in American English that are slightly different than words in British English. And there are words in I American think war is war. And I think no, I, I, no. And there are words in, in American English that are spelled different than words in British English. And the Grammarian's War is the conflict yes, that Americans and British have over proper spelling, pronunciation, and definition of things like pants. <laughs> yeah, that's an embarrassing one, isn't it? Um, I, uh, I thought that you were going the direction of... Um, so can you please define grammarian in this sense? Is it the British definition? Or the definition? <laughs> and I was about to feel really dumb. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't know that I knew that there was a difference. But it's spelled the same. Um, yeah, being grammarian is a pretty violent too, so. Yeah, being in the South, obviously, the grammarian war um, is, is with two families, elder mothers, their fists. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair i think that happens a fair bit too yeah. especially on the holidays yeah i mean it's the two it's, it's the two they're not related grandmothers they're like you know right different sides of the by, family by yeah. marriage yeah yeah yep and you have the, you know, the, the, grandma the, and then, like, the warm and fuzzy grandma <laughs> yeah it usually starts out with them arm wrestling <laughs> I don't know what you all do on holidays, but that's the our airing of grievances. <laughs> the airing of grievances. <laughs> we we just call that Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so your holidays um, were well then, clearly. <laughs> the grammarian war. Grammarians. Grammarian. Grammarians. The grammarians. So. Plural possessive. It will be ongoing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, a, so it's it's a, like war, a cold war. It's a war between grammarians. It's a war between No, it's the grammarians against the rest of us. It's a cold war. <laughs> Trying to... Who are the rest of us? Like, how Everybody do you, who does not... You're one of them? <laughs> well, no, who, how do you... Like, how do you... Is it a self... Self-claimed identity? You self those, those who do not correctly use Oxford commas against those who correctly use Oxford commas, the grammarian's war. <laughs> that seems accurate to me. <laughs> totally. Like, I would not be shocked if that were the case. Because really, 
people that I would categorize because as really, comma. <laughs> people, people that I would categorize, I just sprinkle commas throughout sentences, whether they need it or not. And if I'm not sure there's a comma necessary, then I put three dots in. Like that's when you read Slack, like understand that Gary didn't know if a comma went there, he put three dots in. So, um, or it wasn't a complete thought, which is probably more likely, not a complete thought, <laughs> like that last sentence. Um, so I think though that we can all identify the grammarians. Like they don't, they self, they they self expose. <laughs> self expose. <laughs> that, you're you're that's wow. <laughs> all right, well, those grammarians. <laughs> The grammarian's war, the war against the words coming out of Gary, Gary's and grammary, grammary's mouths. Yeah, they, they remove their pants. If you, yeah. If British you, or American. If you pair that with your grandmothers, there's a lot of, there's a lot of imagery happening here. <laughs> Wait, Freud would, Freud would enjoy this podcast. Today. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't foresee grammarian's war taking this turn. <laughs> You never do, really. I mean, no, it's, I never it's do. on you. It's Surprise. like Spanish Inquisition. In a flash, as it were. <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. No one ever does. <sighs> Woo! A lot of breath from that. A little winded. <laughs> I'm glad we exposed the grammarians for. Yeah. <laughs> but not the grandmas. Will, will we lose our rating? <laughs> we're, we're rated... Yeah, to be explicit anyway. Yeah, I was like, did we ever have the rating? To be no. I think we started off I, just I, no holds barred. Yeah, no. I, I I tag I tag our podcast as explicit just for safety. What? That's a good idea. Do you remember the topic of the first episode? Was the topic of the first episode was barefoot running. Barefoot running. I remembered it too. I just I felt the need to say it to confirm. <laughs> I gave the topic, but I wasn't actually there. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the. Which was a bold move, incidentally. That was the beta version. That was the version where uh, Gary and I actually tried to hold something together uh, because you weren't. The it was sort connected. of like a topic grenade. <laughs> yeah. Like launched it and like took cover. Like, yep. I'm not dying. I had no that. idea how to do how to deal with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we still have no idea what to do with it, but we've gotten better at not knowing what to do with it. Somewhat. I speak for yourself. I feel confident in not knowing what to do here. <laughs> it's yeah. If, if anything else, I think it's just been a, a a process of learning to be less confident in not knowing. <laughs> and that's not. Is that a life lesson we need? I, don't know. <laughs> I was. Uh, I mean, I, comfortable I, in it. I'm yeah. pretty confident in not knowing. I actually. Uh, recently said, "Yeah, this is not something that I would want to do all by myself for a month." Uh, about a potential project that was on the, like, I mean, I, I think it could be done. I think it could be done better with two people. Nice. I came to the realization yeah. last night that, that I, I like, a, as a developer, I feel like I'm finally, like, at the bottom rung of the ladder. Like, I feel like I'm starting to, like, grasp things now. Um, oh, like, you're, so you're the, hanging you, off you've the bottom attained, of the You've attained the bottom rung. I've reached the bottom rung. Yeah. I think you're more than bottom rung, but... That's just from from the person that's standing next to the house watching you on the ladder. That's what I think. I, I think you're more than bottom rung, Gary. <laughs> I, I, think I, I think, well, I guess, like, I'll, I'll frame that. In the context of, um, like, kind of realizing, like, how deep the rabbit hole goes and, and in development practices and why. I, I certainly wrote functional code, like, previously. But, but I think there's a point now I've realized that in, like, the context of working in a team that, that there's there are constructs and there are design patterns that exist in code that may or may not actually be faster the first time you do them. But in long-term like maintenance of a project, that structure and that, that extensive abstraction is super important. Although I have been accused of over-engineering, so maybe I'm not the guy. Yeah, there's a balance the there. The importance there's, of abstraction. A, there's a balance there between, between being like abstracting something to the, point of insanity and just writing a writing it all in a single file or namespace or something because that is all it's ever going to be yeah do you uh do you guys remember gorse the visualizer nope you can like pass a so you can pass a repo in svn or get um and it'll do like this really cool visual display we could run our we can run our repo through it actually i should do that gorse how do you 
Could I get a definition? Like, <laughs> source, <laughs> source, source sentence. Source, could you spell source that for me? G O U R C E. Yeah, I think it's course.io. Um, so, so it's just this really weird thing that displays the commits and who did it and blah, 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 and it's fun. And um, uh, it, you know, I don't know, it's a great way to visualize. You can kind of see patterns if you, if you watch it a lot. Like certain people, when they hit a project, like they're guaranteed to create eight files, regardless of what it is. <laughs> like this commit's gonna have eight files in it, you know? Over the course of the day, they'll create eight files. It doesn't matter how complex the thing is. I mean, it could be 800 files, but their minimum to make anything work is eight files. <laughs> but you could probably do it in some cases in one, you know? But That's like if there was a data visualization of when I enter a project and like the level of commits, it is it will just go. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's what I do too. Yeah. Just like, oh, I, that's definitely when Allison joined because. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we stopped making ridiculously huge single commits and now we're doing a whole bunch of tiny commits. Yeah. So how do you handle that in the case where you, you get super focused on a project or on a task and you get in and realize I've written 200 lines of code and not made a commit. Do you then- I still break it up. Go, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So you go back and you, you say, you just like patch commit and- That's, that's, um, that's why I use a, a visual, um, that's why I use Git Kraken as a visual um, a Git client. Not because I, like, I don't actually use it anymore to, to make the actual commit and put the commit message, but I use it to select the, the chunks of code that I'm going to be committing because that way I can see it as opposed to figuring out line numbers and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot. I do a lot in patch mode that way, but it, it's effectively the same thing. Just like it, it displays like a bunch of code, like a block of code changes. Like you want this part of the commit? Yes or no. And you just kind of iterate over that. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's really a reminder for me, like what, what are the pieces that I did? You know? I think the first time I go through, if it's a large commit like that, I just go through and read it. I don't actually commit anything on the first pass. No, anyway, no. Uh, the grammarian's war, I think it's time to get a definition. Oh, yeah. So the grammarian's war is, um, it was a conflict between rival systems of how to teach Latin in the 1500s. Ooh, even more fun than the British American uh, English. Did, right? Was there actual bloodshed? Uh, things got pretty heated. Um, I believe the direct quote <laughs> that I found, what was it? It was pretty... Um, Those Latin instructors. Vehemently waged in print between 1519 and 1521. So yeah, stakes were high. Um, old school, new, <laughs> new school. <laughs> there, wow. there were there were pamphlets, um, pamphlets exchanged. No, no bloodshed, but just pamphlets. Maybe what, what year? Uh, fifteen nineteen to twenty one. When was the when was the Gutenberg press? The right around that time, wasn't it? Well, if they're printing 15... pamphlets, then probably. Uh, I mean, that, well, that was my thought. I think that I closed my browser. Well, you are now allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Not shockingly, new school uh, techniques and preferences for teaching Latin won out over the old school. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, people joined in the fray on one side of another. Things things got personal. Well, I think much, much like the current political climate. Yeah. And on that note, let's get to Bird's Press. <laughs> Uh, so I submitted a question earlier, uh, over the a, break, oh, um, Siri. and, uh, this yeah. was a result of some stuff that I was Not reading you. at the time. Stop mumbling, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. It's what I do. And so my question is to all of us, myself included, yeah. uh, which it's a two part question. Do you have Amazon prime? And if so, could you ever see yourself canceling it and using alternatives to Amazon? Uh, I yes not. and yes. <laughs> yes and yes? What would you use as alternatives? Just local? Just. Um, <clears throat> there have been a, there have been a, uh, hold on. Let's, let's look here. I, have, I have, just have to know. Are you still Gutenberging? You are. Okay, I will answer. 1440. Okay. <laughs> I do not have Amazon Prime. 
So I don't know. Um, if I did, I would like to think I would find alternative means, but I guess I already am finding alternative means. <laughs> so I, cause I have Prime and we use it a lot mm -hmm. and we get things like, like various flowers and, and baking stuff and as well as like stuff that we need and we get like everything on Amazon. Um, and, and, you know, we get lots of school supplies for the kids because they're, you know, unschooling, homeschooling stuff, doing a, whatever. Um, we don't use it to just get random crap generally. Sometimes we do, but we try to avoid that. Um, but basically, almost all of our shopping, and except for grocery shopping, happens on Amazon. So, and the alternative that I like that we could do, like if we weren't using Amazon, it would be like Walmart or Target or something. And neither of those, is, and Walmart is definitely not better. Target is a little bit better, um, but it wouldn't have the same amount and same type of stuff and probably wouldn't be as cheap, which is the other thing. I, I, I don't care about how fast it comes necessarily because I can wait, but like the price and the convenience and never having to leave the house. Um, yeah, it would be, it would be rough. And we've actually, we've actually recently been talking about maybe moving out of the city into like more rural like away from people parts of utah and, and if we did that then we'd be even more indebted to amazon because there's not going to be as many options locally well it's hard when you have to take like on an individual level you have to take your actual like life budget and needs into consideration as well because you're like well supplies for certain things you're like that's part of like how you live so it's hard to cut things out when it's just not it becomes a necessity because how, otherwise like if you did become more rural like how how do things make it to you otherwise? Yeah, exactly right i don't know that i have much to add the, 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 I mean, the crappy part is there's just no good alternatives i mean there have been a couple of groups that have tried to spin up um like an independent version of right so negotiate with a carrier on behalf of a bunch of small sellers um, but the, but then you turn around and figure out, well, how do they make their, you know, how does that third party make their money? Right. And the consumer's not going to pay, you know, I'm already paying for prime. I'm going to pay another hundred bucks a year for shipping, you know, across, I mean, even it's 10,000 sites that I buy from once, you know, um, although interesting, I'm surprised that, that some of these major channels like Shopify and big commerce have not tried to chase this down a little bit, you know, I mean, they're, they're so seller um, seller oriented, you know, small business oriented. Did you see the number on Shopify this past, on, uh, Black Friday? It was like 5% of traffic on sales went through a Shopify site. In, in previous years, I mean, it's, they've been, you know, much lower. So I don't know. I mean, I, there's some, certainly some lashback against the Amazon, you know, monopoly on e-commerce that isn't really, but it certainly feels that way a lot of the time. Good. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so like, I wasn't sure if you were even frozen or not. Like, I'm Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>